Hey guys, this is Casper with Tape, and today you join me for episode 30 of Solar Civilization, and today we start with um, the Brutus Mark I, something that I showed you in the last episode, it was uh, testing its guns, this is um, my new fighter jet, and it is going to orbit to knock down another, another suspected spy satellite, you try and say suspected spy satellite, that's a tongue twister and a half, actually it's not, I'm just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what I really like right now is this B9 Saber engine. You can see as it goes supersonic, the engine actually changes, the exhaust looks different. It is so cool. I love the new rockets um, in B9. It just looks amazing. I'm not a fan actually of this on rocket mode, but on atmospheric mode it just looks incredible. I mean, look at that. That's It, it changes as it goes supersonic. That is... If you actually look at like Falcon 9 launches, you can see the change as it goes supersonic, and it is amazing. I just love this kind of sonic boom type thing. Anyway, this has been outfitted with a few new things uh, after the um, last uh, the last iteration, which was a prototype and was just ground testing. It's still not a great atmospheric plane because it needs to be long range in space, and I forgot to put a Mechjab unit on it, so I'm not entirely sure how long range it is in space. But um, yeah, I think it could. Uh, defend the space around Kerbin quite well. It has a Vulcan cannon. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I thought there was a so it sounded a really weird noise outside my house. <laughs> that's why there was silence there for a bit. Anyway, yeah, it has, um, I believe that's a Vulcan cannon. Basically, just a chain gun on the front. Oh, and look at that now. Oh, now it's switched over to rocket mode. But I think just then it looked very cool on atmospheric mode. This has obviously been sped up. It isn't this fast a plane. It's a pretty fast plane, though, because um, it's using that gigantic engine. But it gets mu that engine gets much... Um, Higher ISP than a, um, what is it, rapier engine? Yeah, this is a saber engine and it's better than the rapier engine. Sabers and rapiers, ha, <laughs> sword jokes. Um, de uh, deploy the solar panels, action grouped, obviously, because you want it to look cool with something like this. Yeah, as I said, it has a rotating chain gun at the front, which, um, which should do the job. And I'm bringing just 650 rounds to orbit because, uh, I don't need that many. I'm just knocking down a spy satellite and, you know, you don't need... You don't want to overload um, your space plane with uh, ammunition. Um, anyway, yeah, this episode will be full of things. It has this first, and then um, we'll be arriving at EVE, and then there's um, something to do with the MOHO probe that you'll see in a bit. Anyway, I'm just trying to get my intersect right now with the um, totally, not a, totally Not Another Spy Satellite, because the last spy satellite was called Totally Not A Spy Satellite, but we managed to decode that and realized it really was a spy satellite. Um, and they were really using reverse psychology. Um, they're pretty good, whoever these crazy evil spies are. Um, but yeah, you can see they're totally not a spy satellite. And we'll have to be on the lookout when we uh, next go to Duna, which I have some plans for. And as I often do, I um, kind of <laughs> spoilers. I'm uh, planning to put a put a base there on the next window to um, on the next window to Duna, so uh, we will be on the lookout there, maybe figure out some kind of light fighter system for defense around um, around Duna. Uh, nothing too too over the top, but maybe a couple or a few, just to uh, make sure no one uh, no one tries to take over our uh, our base. It would be horrible to, for that to be lost. Um, but yeah, hopefully, but try not to go too over the top, I guess. Anyway, we're right close to the uh, spy satellite now, and Bill Kerman. Ah. This was supposed to be Luke Kerman. That sucks. Uh, it was supposed to be Luke, like Luke Skywalker, but it's Bill. God, Bill, you've just ruined my day. <laughs> that sucks. I was all like, oh, Luke Kerman, it's going to be like Luke Skywalker, it's going to be great. Ah, <sighs> But Bill Kerman is piloting this. I'm sure he's a fantastic pilot. Uh, yeah, anyway. As we move into Totally Not Another Spy Satellite, we have again realized that it is definitely a spy satellite. It is covered in antennas, probably. Um, this was a while ago when I recorded this, so who knows? But uh, yeah, just using our RCS, really burning up our monopellant, not really paying attention to how much we have, which isn't a huge amount, but I do manage to burn a lot of it, more than I would usually. And we are now going into attack mode. You can see the turret has gone into supersonic modes. There is a small window, just in case this is somehow armed, and we have activated the gun. It's now pointing downwards relative to the spacecraft, of course. And then we do a super awesome flip um, and point ourselves at totally not another spy satellite. And we aim our gun manually um, and just take a few shots or look at the gun. And just take a few shots, and there we go. That's all it took. 
Um, just fight a few. I'll just fire again, make sure it's truly dead. Um, not just decapitated. Now we have the firepower. Unlike last time I did this with stock missiles, we can just really wreck this. Um, it's interesting seeing the casings fly off in zero G. Anyway, that looks pretty destroyed, and we have used 105 rounds on it. So we will have to be conservative of rounds in the future. Anyway, let's go and check out how this thing is um, stood up to our guns. Bill Kerman looks wonderfully happy. And we are burning up all our RCS fuel, because I was not paying attention. Um, this is an incredibly heavy plane, and it has only a small amount of RCS, which is actually only meant for docking. Not that this has docking ports, but it could, and it does have a cargo bay, so, uh, oh, jeez, I've just had my coffee again, so, um, this makes it kind of hard to speak occasionally, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm kind of low on monopropellant, because I've been using it for maneuvering, and we do have a very, that, um, Sabre engine's pretty damn efficient in orbit, actually, I think this would have a lot of Delta V left, you can see I have a huge amount of fuel left, I've hardly burnt any of it, this would be a great candidate for, like, um, Moona, uh, for like going to moon, the moon, maybe Minmus, just for various things, I don't know, maybe it's a science mission, maybe it's some kind of defense mission? Who knows? Um, because I haven't really planned it yet. Uh, I doubt I'd take something like this out to Duna, because it does weigh quite a lot, and there isn't really, um, much use for an atmospheric, uh, vehicle on Duna. Maybe just something small. I actually have some concept things that just look quite cool. I just like the idea of taking some stuff out there. It might look quite cool. Anyway, as we approach the um, the field of battle, I guess, it's not really a battlefield. It's more a I slaughtered a satellite field. We can see that there are just a few things, but there is some kind of bulkhead here. I think it's probably just the RCS tank, but uh, let's make sure it's dead, shall we? Um, there we go, Vulcan turret selected, and destroyed it. And I should have really left it there, because that looked really smooth, but I tried shooting down some other things. That first shot was really good, and all these just kind of missed. But yeah, now it is just a crumple of RCS ports and a battery. Um, any other organization trying to mess with us will uh, probably not be able to use this anymore. Um, this was probably just one of the other continents interested in our space program. And uh, hopefully that will mean, uh, hopefully they don't know about our plans for a Duna base, and hopefully they won't maliciously follow us out there. If they're just communicated with us, um, then, you know, it'll be fine. But we have never even seen their existence, so all that lies. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Brutus Prototype has, uh, has completed its mission, and I think it's time for it to go home. It's uh, time to... Sorry for probably a blip there, as per usual, Sony Vegas was being an asshole, so, uh, that's good. Anyway, as I was probably saying, it's time to bring Brutus Prototype back. Um, Brutus, obviously, uh, is the, um, one of the, uh, one of the assassins who killed Caesar in the play Caesar. So, um, it seemed like an apt name for something that will probably be killing things. Um, I re- ah, oh, if I'd been smart, I would have, um made that totally not a spy satellite, I would have just made it like a, like a, uh, like, so all the first letters spell out Caesar, and it would have been really cool, and some people would be like, hey, he's a smart guy, but, um, instead they'll be like, oh, he called it that because it sounds cool, which is why I really did call it that. Although, I do like how those engines gimbal, those are very cool, I like, they have, like, a ridiculous amount of gimbal on them, but they do look very cool, look at them waggling around there. Bill Cummins does look intently happy. Um, I've left the cockpit in supersonic mode for uh, re-entry. I thought maybe that would help somehow. I do like this cockpit, um, given that it moves around. I, I think it's great for supersonic mode, and is kind of a nice little battle mode, I guess, because it's like one little window. No one's shooting me in the window face. Anyway, as the sun goes away, um, the plane is illuminated by fire, so everything is fine, and the ambient light is turned up to some degree, because uh, I tend to have the ta uh, the ambient light turned up a little bit, um, just to make it a little more visible and better on YouTube. Um, anyway, my cannon is heating up there, I'm kind of worried it will burn off because it's really, he well it's fairly heavy, I think it's something like, um, maybe, I don't know how heavy it is, but it's quite heavy, so if it burns off this could become unstable. And I'd quite like to bring the gun back, actually. Um, I should probably rethink that, because you don't want your Gatling gun just, like, being all melted when you get back. But, I mean, as long as it's not a problem in the parameters of the game, it shouldn't be a problem in uh, real life, surely. Uh, although, 
if there's bullets in there. The bullets are in the cargo bay, but technically there'd be some bullets in the, um, well, some rounds in the gun. So, uh, yeah, that could be a problem. that will go off and just start shooting. Um, yeah, so that that's wonderful. But anyway, it was a fairly, fairly fine de uh, de-entry. I almost said de-entry. I meant de-orbit or re-entry. Um, anyway, we can hopefully just glide over these mountains and not just smack right into them. Because um, I think mountains are kind of rather deadly to planes. Uh, <laughs> I've brought up the far flight systems menu because I want to know uh, my Mark number. This is, if I'm below Mark 1, um, then it's easier to turn, really. I'm just going to kind of line up with the runway. And as I've said before, this isn't actually a great um, atmospheric uh, plane because it has those tiny little wings. And that's only be that's just to make sure that... Uh, it, the, just give it as much delta v in orbit as possible, but um, I think it might be a bit of a, a bit too far, really. Um, it makes it its glide slope pretty bad. Probably something, maybe similar to the real space shuttles, but it isn't particularly maneuverable either. It was built with um, space fightering in mind, and uh, given that wings are its um, method of going to and returning from space, maybe I should uh, make some bigger ones. Um, but those air brakes do give me quite a bit of control, so uh, that's something, I guess. I did put the wheels out there, but I decided to put them away because um, they they provide drag to the bottom of the plane, and it's just not particularly useful. Um, I have slowed this down now. Um, as you can see, it is quite a slow uh, slow procedure. Um, it doesn't look like a fantastic frame rate either. I I don't think I was getting brilliant frame rates with this. I think B9 usually messes me up. Although the video I did on BD Armory had loads of B9, and that was fine. Maybe it's just this fighter. Maybe it's the save bar's quite big. Um, and maybe there's a bunch of stuff still around the Space Center, which will have loaded in now because of uh, BD Armory. Maybe it's a mix of all these things. Maybe it's all a lie. Maybe you need to wake up. Okay, yeah, don't worry. You're probably not in some kind of coma. Um, I can tell you that definitively because I have conscience, so, uh, yeah, but if you choose to believe me is a completely different, okay, let's not get into this or it gets confusing and some people start not believing life is real, so that's good. <laughs> anyway, um, this is coming down fairly fast and fairly vertically and fairly not forwards, so that's not a great combination and I start pulling back way too, no, actually, I stopped pulling back way too much, lose control, and then I punch out because there's no way I would have controlled that, and activate the parachute. That sucks. I really do hate losing planes, but I didn't lose Bill Kerman, which is the important bit. I will have to rebuild that. It was only a prototype, um, but I will have to rebuild it with landing in mind. Anyway, now we have better things. Getting to EVE with no guns and no crashing, hopefully. Um, anyway, I need to just uh, point this in the right direction and... Um, bring my periaps down uh, around Eve because I need to uh I'm not gonna aero brake because this has enough fuel not to aero brake and I uh aero braking's fairly on uh fairly unprecise and I don't want to put myself in um a circular orbit I want to put myself in a highly incli no a highly elliptical orbit so I can get out to Gilly without too much fuel burn and because then it's less fuel to leave it's all just about saving fuel um, because I don't have any awesome technology yet. Well, I have fairly cool technology. I mean, I'm going to different planets. This is my second um, vehicle to reach, well, my second manned vehicle to reach another planet after the Duna Explorer. This is the um, ETV M01, which is the EVE transfer vehicle, Mission 1 Kepler, um, as it has been named actually by a, f um, by a subscriber, I think, or just a commenter, maybe. Um, but yeah, I did quite like that name. Uh, so yeah, that is what I have picked out for this. Um, this is much better than the uh, uh, than the Duna Explorer, given that it has a lab, it has sufficient science experiments. Um, and talking of science experiments, it's time to grab some science, I think. Um, uh, take a crew report and an EVA report and transmit that back. I have left this sped up because there's a lot to get in this episode and it's all just fairly standard stuff. Um, I'm going to put a couple of people in the lab now so that I can re for, uh, refurbish some experiments. Um, it does also have a habitation module because I believe you need some habitation on your way to other planets um, rather than being in a tiny little pod. Although I didn't actually put them in the pod, in the habitation on the way to Eve. Um, but let's say they were and they just got into the um, pod for 
maneuvers, I guess. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to grab this data and then polish up those experiments so that they don't, um, so that I can uh, use them again. Because there are two probes to drop into Eve's atmosphere and that little lander to land on Gilly. Because Gilly is really easy to land on and return from. Uh, Eve is the polar opposite. It is really difficult. Um, I think probably the most difficult to do a mission to other than the sun. Tylo is fairly difficult because it has a gravity similar to Earth. No, not Earth. To Kerbin. But it has no atmosphere to slow you down. Although in fairness, I reckon I could pull that off. Because I've landed I, in my real solar system stuff. I've landed on the real moon. Um, with fairly similar to stock parts, actually. Um, and the real moon's fairly similar to Tylo. So I reckon I could do that. I reckon I could just no sweat. Um, big talk, so I will have to try it at some point and probably make a fool of myself. But um, although in fairness, Scott Manley did have to use a big vehicle, so it's not like I'm gonna ha have some brilliant stroke of genius. Um, if Scott Manley uh, can't do it with a like normal looking vehicle, then I probably can't. Um, Hot Gaming had an interesting interesting run at it actually. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about Hot Gaming because I I I really like his stuff, but um, it's just I I I'm really into like a Scott Manley stuff where it's all like realistic. I guess it's just their play styles and they're entitled to their play styles, I guess. Anyway, I need to grab that. Um, I'm just kind of talking really, really calmly about random crap. Um, anyway, we are now in orbit of Eve. I need to grab um, one of those antennas and put it on the Eve Explorer because I actually didn't put any on the Eve Explorer. <coughs> it's not the Eve Explorer, is it? It's the Kepler because I, I'm going to need them for other stuff. Anyway, on to the final part of the episode and today, and now we need to... Um, move the Daedalus Mark II um, into the right orbit to encounter Moho. Um, it is called Daedalus, of course, because it's flying incredibly close to the sun, and we must hope that its wings are not burned off. Greek mythology, it's rather wonderful. Um, anyway, I have performed a test burn, and now it looks like uh, here is the optimal place to perform our burn. Um, this will be landing on Moho, and grabbing me a bunch of science. It's a fairly small spacecraft and the transfer stage is not huge um it's fairly big in fairness um it's bigger than i'd like it to be because i'm a bit of a show off with efficiency like if i could somehow do this with like well i should have put an ion drive on it because that'd be showy off but if i could do it with like a toroidal tank and nothing else i would anyway i would use the time of this burn to kind of just add a bunch more transfer alarms um because i will need to be going places soon and you can see Kerbin to Duna 105 days away so that is 105 days for me to prepare myself um a base kit like a really decent base kit to set up a base on Duna um anyway that wasn't perfect um and I keep burning and it does look like it's making it better but this is incredibly inefficient what I'm doing right now so I am wasting fuel which I will need around Moho um so yeah I've kind of screwed this up a bit and it is at four times time accelerate so it does look more efficient than it is so I, I, I use a maneuver node after a while and decide, yeah, let's do this efficiently, let's do it right, and let's go to Moho. Um, so yeah, after lots of um, pulling on these maneuver nodes, I uh, get my, my encounter nice and close. And it's not brilliantly close to Moho, um, as it turns out, uh, but uh, but I'll, I'm going to fine-tune it later. And I can't really put down a maneuver node because KSP maneuver node system, it just has problems with stuff. Which is fine, it's an alpha game and you shouldn't complain, it's a really great game. Uh, basically when people complain about little things in games, I'm like, is it fun? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll play it. Uh, anyway, I just saw there that um, the burn to slow myself down at Moho was actually much smaller than I thought it was going to be, which is very nice. But anyway, I can't get another um, maneuver node on this, um, on, this, on this blue line, so I'm just going to add myself an alarm to tell me, uh, tell me when I need to do the burn and I'll just figure it out myself. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you will come back for the next episode with lots of hopefully cool stuff. This has been KSP with Tape. I'll see you next time.